And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at Mr. Jack in New York, which is a two-player game, uh, and you may have seen me quite some time back review the original game, Mr. Jack, and this is going to be a game much along the same lines. As you can tell, it has the same theme, just a different location, but it's going to bring in different characters, it's going to bring in different obstacles, uh, and different ways to maneuver around the board in order to try and escape if you're Jack, or to try and find Jack if you're the detective. Uh, as I said, it's for two players, it's pretty easy to learn, uh, and this game was provided to me for review by the Board Game Exchange, where you can rent and try games before you buy them, so if you'd like to check them out, uh, go ahead and check them out at their website, but thanks to them for, for, for providing the game for review. But real quick, why don't we take a quick look at what you get inside the box with this game, how the game plays, and then I'll come back and give you my final thoughts on it. So here you can see the setup for Mr. Jack in New York, which is very similar to setup for the base game of Mr. Jack, uh, with different characters and with a different layout for the board and some different escape routes, uh, some of which are by boat, and then one of which is actually going to be uh, through the actual city. So you can either escape by boat or out one exit, instead of the multiple exits that were in the base game from the regular map. Now, in the game, it's going to be a two-player game. Each player is going to have a role. One player is going to be Mr. Jack, the other player is going to be the inspector. Uh, and based on which player you are, you're going to do different roles. Uh, one's trying to find Jack before he escapes, and Jack is simply trying to escape or to make it until the end of the game. The board is actually oriented in a way where one player sits on this side with a yellow, and that's going to be the inspector player, and the other side sits on the side with the gray, and that's going to be the Jack player. Now, you can also see on the board that the turns are going to be oriented so that it shows you which player plays first. In this case, the detective gets one card, then Jack gets two, and then the detective one. And then on the next turn, it's going to be Jack one, detective two, Jack one, and that's going to alternate throughout the game over the eight turns. Now, on a turn, what's going to happen? Well, first, let's start with the setup for the game. Jack is going to shuffle these alibi cards, and he's going to take one out of them, and he's going to put it aside, and he'll be the only player who knows what this card is out of the two. And this will be who Mr. Jack is as one of these characters on the board. So for this game, Mr. Jack is going to be Cloud Rider. That's a good person to be, and they'd set this card on their side, and only they know that Mr. Jack is Cloud Rider, which is a character that will be used by both players. After that's done, you're going to actually deal out four of these cards. These are going to be the roll cards for each of the characters. You'll deal four out, and players will have a chance of choosing between them. As I said, the inspector gets one, then Jack two, then the inspector the last card. And each of these players is going to have a different ability. So here we have, uh, we have Miss Emma Grant. She is going to be able to move a certain amount of spaces, and then after she moves, she's going to be able to turn any one type of building into a different type of building. She's essentially going to be able to turn these metro areas, uh, or these new buildings, or these gas lamps into parks on the opposite side. Parks are going to be areas where you can hide from other players, always making you invisible, and that's a key mechanic in this game. We also have a player, like we have Alfred, uh, I don't, can't read his name here, Ellie Beach. Uh, he can move one to three, and then he's going to make a new metro station. So, he would put out one of these metro stations onto the board somewhere, and you'd be able to travel between the metro stations for a movement. So if he were to move, he could move between these, or any other player could move between them. We also have Cloud Rider, and as we know, Cloud Rider is Jack, but she's going to move one to three spaces, and she's going to put a new building onto the board. Now, these buildings are important because she can move across whole sets of buildings as if they were one space. So, if she were to move on these buildings, she would be able to move across this entire section here as if it were one space. And that's basically how you get the idea. We have a police detective here who's going to be able to move these uh, do not cross lines to different areas, which will prevent players from moving across them. Now, as I said, you'll choose one player as the inspector. You'll move that player. You'll do their ability, or maybe you'll do their ability and then move the player. Uh, then Jack will take two, and then the inspector will get the last one. At the end of a turn, you're going to see if Jack is seen or not. And seen simply means that he's either in the light, uh, next to one of these light lamp posts, which will be out on the board. Uh, there's a character that can put them out on the board. Or he's next to another character. Uh, so, for example, these two characters are seen simply because they're next to each other. But this character here, this character here, and this character here are not seen, because they are not next to anyone, and they're not next to lights. Additionally, if a character were both next to a light and in a park, they would be unseen because the park keeps them hidden from everybody else. So Jack will tell the inspector player if they're seen or unseen. 
And at this point, you'll flip this card over either to the seen side or the unseen side. If they're unseen, all of the seen characters are obviously not Jack. So you can flip over all of the seen characters to their opposite side, white, putting them on the whited out side, showing that they are not Jack. That leaves, in this case, three characters who could be Jack. And that substantially narrows down the field for the inspector player trying to determine who Jack is. If they were unseen, then it would be the opposite effect. In this case, the three characters would flip over, and there would still be five options as to who Jack would be. And you move on to the next turn, carrying out the same type of mechanics. The ways to win are for Jack to be able to escape, either via these boats, uh, if this line had been moved, he, if he gets to the boat after a turn where he was unseen, he would be able to escape. Additionally, he can escape through this spot on the board if he was unseen on the previous turn. The other way for Jack to win is to make it all the way to turn 8 without being discovered as to who he is. If you're the inspector, you can only win by finding Jack, which would be moving a piece onto the character you think is Jack and accusing him. If you're correct, you win the game, but if you're wrong, Jack wins and he escapes to New York. Now, Mr. Jack in New York also adds a little bit of a different mechanic in the form of the informant who's out here on Liberty Island. You can move from the main area to Liberty Island with one of the characters, and if you do so, you're going to replace your character uh, and the informant, so the, your character takes the place of the informant, and you get an alibi card, which will show you one of the characters who is obviously not Jack. So now we know that Francis J. Templety is not Jack. Uh, good if you're in the inspector, and also good if you're Jack, because you can add it to your pile of cards. Uh, and that's one more person that the inspector can't find out isn't Jack from the cards. When you do this, you're going to put the informant somewhere out onto the board, either in these wharfs or uh, next to certain areas, these blacked out spots, uh, to show that they are available and they've moved to a different spot, but they're going to be X'd outside up. On the next turn, you're going to flip them back over and they'll be available to be used again by a different character or maybe even by the same character uh, to get more information. As I said, the person who either escapes as Jack or makes it the full eight turns, or if the inspector, if they discover who Jack is before the end of eight turns, that player will be the winner. And there you have the gameplay of Mr. Jack in New York. Uh, for those of you who have played Mr. Jack, this is going to look very familiar. It is basically the same game, uh, but they've taken it, they've kind of cleaned up some of the exit mechanics, made it a little harder to guarantee who's going to win and balanced it a little bit more. Uh, and gave you completely different character powers and a couple of different mechanics thrown into the game. So if you were a fan of the original Mr. Jack, I think you'll really, really enjoy Mr. Jack in New York. I think it's something you should definitely check out. And if you're new to the series, uh, you may want to start with Mr. Jack in New York for a more tight, more balanced edition of the game. To try this game and over 800 others before you buy them, visit BoardGameExchange.com. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.